Hello, and thank you for participating in our online annual discipline specific activity. For those of you that I've not met, I'm Kaylee Malsey, the Associate Dean of School Partnerships here at Penn Highlands Community College. While I have communicated with all of you in some form or another, it is my pleasure to work with each one of you. As many of you know, we typically hold an in-person event each fall, allowing you to work face-to-face -face without the college faculty and our college faculty liaisons to talk about many topics, including course content, delivery methods, assessment, or research and development in the field. This event is a requirement of our NACEP accreditation. While it saddens us that this year we were unable to hold an in-person event due to the COVID-19 pandemic, our liaisons have worked hard to provide an opportunity for us to still meet the requirements in some face-to-face -face format. In the fall, faculty liaisons held live Zoom meetings with ACE faculty. We understand that not everybody was able to attend these meetings at the specific time, but the meetings were all recorded and have been uploaded for you to complete and view at your leisure. Supporting documents from all of these meetings are also included on the training pages. We appreciate your time in completing the annual discipline specific activity. There is a short survey that we are asking you to complete once you have completed the training. If you have any questions regarding this training or other requirements, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. You can email me at kmalsey at penhighlands.edu or give me a call at 814-262-3859. Thank you again for your dedication to the students and your participation in the ACE program. Thank you. As you all are aware, due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, we are not able to hold our on-campus dinner and training evening that we typically hold in the fall. As this is a requirement then of our accreditation, we are offering this Zoom session, right? So our um, this in replacement, of course, of our annual discipline uh, specific workshop. So this one's, I'm going to have a variety of information, which I'll have the outline for this next slide. But this session then, of course, is recorded and it'll be sent out in the spring for you to watch at your leisure and if you're able, and if you are unable to attend the list live session. So this counts then towards the required yearly training attendance that all ACE faculty have to have every year. So this particular session pertains to the social science department discipline for psych and social 101 specifically. And to introduce myself here, my name is Casey Crowley and I am the liaison for the psych and social, right? And I have been teaching in higher ed since 2011. And I am currently in, um, this is my first year and a half or so at Penn Highlands teaching as an adjunct. I've taught with many other places, but this is with Penn Highlands. So, all right, let's get started here. So this session, I will be specifically going over, like, I'm gonna review what is REVEL, right? Because it seems like that seems to be a little scary in a sense of it's newer and not everyone likes to use it all the time. So we're going to talk about a little bit about what is Revel, and then Pearson Revel online resources. There's so many. I want to just highlight some of the you know useful ones, right? Some ones that are more practical for you guys. Um, keeping your PowerPoint updated. I know sometimes we get really busy and it can be. Um, you know, challenging, I guess, in a sense to kind of keep that updated. So I'm just going to throw out some useful tips to just keep it fresh, right? Um, videos then using the Smart Pearson player. They have some awesome new videos. They just started this like a couple years ago. I love them. They're clear, they're precise, to the point, love them. Okay, so we'll talk about those some more. And printing exams and quizzes. So with you guys, with the ACE faculty, you guys, your students don't have access to all the online quizzes and things, but you can print the materials. So I'll show you 
Jen talk about that in a couple of slides. And then there's the mobile app that you guys have access to. So we'll just briefly go over a little bit of that also. And then at the end, I'll present a few practical tips for teaching in this program, and I'll open it up to anyone else that would like to present and include any of their own practical tips. Okay, so what is Revel, right? <laughs> Revel is a um, immersive, immersive learning experience that enlivens familiar and respected course content with media, interactives, and assessments. It sounds really wordy, but it's really um, very helpful. And what's great is that you can take pieces of this parts of the interactives and the assessments, and you can use them, incorporate them inside your lessons and your lectures. So some of these online resources, right? There's um, the downloadable PowerPoints, which is probably the one thing that you would want to include for sure. You don't have to use them all, but it's great because it at least sets you an outline. And then, um, so again, you have access to all these online sources while your high school students, of course, don't use Revel. Um, you, as the instructor resources, can supplement your course with this. You have permission to, like I said before, print quizzes and tests um, and incorporate them into your um, course. And of course, all the media interactives are available. So Word documents, that they have discussions available for you, exams, quizzes, questions, all those things are available that you don't even have to like come up with on your own. They're there for you and they've already been approved by the publishers. And then of course the media interactives can be accessed and used in your classroom, but you'd have to access them online, right? Like you can't pull the media interactives without doing it from online. So this is a quick little minute and a half kind of video from Pearson that walks you through how some of to download some of these instructions. And then I'm gonna have my own PowerPoint walkthrough, but this is, I think, very helpful. If you've never done this before, this is like start you out at the very beginning. Hello. This is Jay Jenkins with Pearson Education. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to access instructor resources inside of your Revel program. So if you log in to the Revel, so if you Google Pearson Revel um, or Yahoo or Bing search it, um, you will get the Pearson Revel login page and then click sign in using your Pearson information. And if you already have a course created, you'll see the course. If not, you can go to search materials and create your own course um, based on the um, textbook that you're using in the course. And then once you're inside of the Revel course, which we just click on the name of the course, on the left-hand side, we'll see that there is a resources tab. And if we click resources, that will then bring us to the resources by chapter, and so you can download PowerPoints, test banks, videos, things like that, whatever is available. And if you just click on it, um, you'll just want to uh, understand where your computer is set to download programs um, that um, you download from the web, and whether it's a download folder or a documents folder or another type of file folder, um, just make note of where it will download it, and then you can go retrieve it and open it from there. Um, I hope this is helpful. And I hope you have a great day. Again, I like to include that in there because it's straightforward. Hello. Oops, about played it again there. But it's straightforward from the very beginning of where to access the material. And um, if I would have shown you, it, it wouldn't shown you the beginning like that because I have been accessing mine in forever. Okay, so this um, is another, I just wanted to highlight the fact that a lot of those resources that I'll be, examples I'll be addressing in this PowerPoint are from the sociology, but 
there, the psychology textbook has downloadable resources too. And there are PowerPoints, videos, tests, and quizzes, and other digital resources, just like in the SOCH in the psych. And I just wanted to highlight that this is the textbook that you guys are currently using. And, but like I said, they're all there. And I think I've included like one little power, like one little image from that, but most of my things are from the SOCH. Okay, so this is again, you would click there, just like the video was saying, click here. And then, and then what's great is once you click there, it actually comes up to here um, on the social one. And I brought this screenshot up because mine sets that it goes to the dashboard. And of course I have running course right now. And then you'd see stuff that you don't wanna see. <laughs> so resources, is great. Just click on that and then you can just access everything here. So you can bring this over. But once you click, like he was saying, you got to know where your stuff's going and when you download it, right? So once you click on the Word documents or zip files, you will be prompted then to download. So just make sure you say where you want to save as, right? Let me go to wanted to bring it in so that I can show you the live session. I'll float it over here. Okay. Yay, floating. <laughs> so you can see this then is where it would come up, right? So this is a live session. As you can see that once you scroll down, what's great about these is that it, they update it. I want to show you. So like over here is winter 2020 updates. So if you if I would click on that, it would prompt me to download. But you could click on that and it literally gives you some current events, updates and bulletin and things that are like right from that, um, what's going on right now, right? So that is some of the newer things. Like I said, this is from the live page here. But I just wanted to float that over. I'll be um, doing more screenshots because what happens, like I said, every time you click on that, it just prompts you to download. So um, it wasn't a point for me to do that. <laughs> Does that make sense? Did you want to see any more? No? Okay, we're good. Okay. All right. So then the next slides, like I said, most of my stuff here will be then the digital I mean, uh, screenshots from the digital text whenever I do things. So keeping your PowerPoint up to date, current events updates, like I was saying, like if you go online, they actually have updates for you that you can just include in there, which I'll have on the next slide. And then um, modern pictures, which are very helpful, right? Because they have you already have the rights to those pictures, then you don't have to worry about copyrights or anything. They will give, you know, they've already done that for you. Um, so you can use those and then graphs and charts, right? And that's all available online for you. So here, an example, this is what it would look like if you would pull up the text and you can see, like it gives you like current events bulletin right from the text. And then you can scroll down and it'll give you like, you know, a, here's an article, this one's from July, 2020. So very current, right? And you can, and this is from the cultural chapter, you know, and for sociology, that's like chapter two or three, depending on what version you're using. And so it's, like I said, it's like right there, you, you got things going, right? It's really nice. And then modern pictures. This seems like, I'm not, I'm not trying to hurt anyone's intelligence, but I mean, I'm guilty of it too sometimes where I'm like, oh, this picture works and I'll just keep it in my PowerPoint. But then I'm like, oh, wait, you know, I got to update my pictures, right? I've had to do it too, especially, I mean, media is probably the worst corp corporate culprit of it, goodness, goodness. But it, it helps. It keeps it relatable for the student and the concepts and theories. It just connects it better for them. So new versus old, right? Okay. And then this one is actually from the psychology. This is one of straight from one of the psych um, PowerPoint slides. And you can see that they have incorporated, incorporated, maybe I'm in trouble speaking today. 
this one's from the chapter 14, which is something I wanted to highlight because that is the one that's the, for the assessment this um, fall for psych. So it's nice because they've included some little catchy things. Some things are actually more for even high school students, right? This one, for example, talks about things that are on the internet, you know, and it kind of uses Harry Potter personality tests as examples of how they go from all sorts of media to do these kind of things, right? So that's kind of nice. So they've already made those connections for you. And then here's one of my little helpful things. Just I know this sounds like I, I always pride myself in some media knowledge and I just discovered this not too long ago. <laughs> if you hit the shift and the Windows key plus S all at the same time, you can mark the area you want to keep and it's it takes it as a screenshot for you, right? So this digital text allows you for quick additions of visuals, charts and pictures into your PowerPoint. It's so quick, like you literally are clicking Right, you click over here, you hold the shift, and you just mark the area that you want. Right, you just mark it, and then that, and then you can paste on this in the next screen. Right, paste that screenshot, and it's perfect. You didn't have to like copy, paste, all that stuff. It's just like right there. Right. Nice. <laughs> I love how like it's uh, it's not something like I said. There was something I discovered not too long ago, and figured I better share that, but it's very, very helpful. And it's nice and clean too. So doing that on then the current graphs, and that's the same way you can do the graphs, right? The, again, it's the shift, Windows key S all at the same time, hold it, mark whatever you want, and then you can put it in there and they give you the source. And as you can see, they're updated sources. I pointed this one out, right? This one's been pointed out to you. Then I'm like, hey, it's 2018, right? Like you want something within five years. And, and if you're using the current textbook that's in the master syllabus to use, then you're gonna have information that's within the first, within five years. All right, videos. This one might get a little, this one's got a little more explanations here, but they're very useful. I'm not gonna show the videos, don't, don't worry. But they are actually only, like the shortest one's like three minutes. The longest one I've seen is like seven minutes. So three to seven minutes, right? Um, Revel for sociology and psychology, they've had these features in exclusive short documentary video series. They're calling them Pearson. Well, this one's for sociology and they call them Pearson Originals for Soch. And they found um, throughout the narrative of the textbook. And they're calling them docu series and they illustrate a a variety of social issues, bringing key topics to life for students as they read through their sociology for Revel for specifically. And these docu-series, um, they're embedded within and complements the core narratives. So it's like, like I said, they're within the chapters. Um, but then you can access them as a faculty. You don't have to go scroll through all the chapters. They actually give you a document that's like, here's a Word document and it just like maps it out for you. like. This is the, um, like they'll have a little description of the video and then they'll have the link for you, okay? Well, right here, this is what I was even putting in the PowerPoint here. So this, they'll say this literally is like part of what is from the uh, Word document. They'll say this video presents the concepts of gender and everything, right? And to facilitate the discussion prior to watching the video, you know, you have your students answer questions. So it even gives you like little guides, right? Some tools to use. And then my little addition there, the practical tip, um, these videos cannot be embedded into PowerPoint. That's probably one of the, my critiques for it too. I'm like, mm, makes me sad, but you know, cause it's not off YouTube, it's straight off their websites. So you have to then be ready to have them in a separate online window or have a link you can embed the link and then you can have the link then that'll open up separately in your powerpoint so yeah it's not perfect but it's it is really they are pretty nice this one these are some of the videos and you and you can see they have like you know they're helpful then in articulating difficult concepts and facilitating 
um, challenging topics, especially, um, like I said, some of the stuff is geared with sociology and these videos specifically are, but they, some of the topics like, you know, when you're dealing with gender and race and sex, sexuality, especially in an intro classes, it can be challenging. And these videos actually do a nice job of keeping the concepts clear to the point without little frills, right? And they're very neutral in the way they speak. So you can't, you know, they're not trying to emphasize certain things or anything like that. So I think it's very nice, like I said, to the point. Um, and like I said, they're about three to seven minutes at, at, at the most I've seen seven minutes. And that would, you know, and that would, that's like rare. Most of them are under five. Okay, so I think they're pretty interesting. So printing exams and quizzes. So there's what they call the test banks, right? In the video, it showed um, real quick, uh, like how you could access those test banks, right? It's again, that prompts you to download, uh, but it's under the instructor resources. And it's important then to use them for the assessment for the psych, for example, but it's also, um, for sociology next year, we'll be doing the assessment and they're going to have that same kind of deal. They're going to, you're, you're going to have to have the um, t exams or quizzes needed for that assessment, you know, be able to submit it to your class. So printing them. The great thing is you can, here's an example, right? Here's a test bank example. This one I pulled again from going with the theme of culture there, right? And this one's from the chapter two culture. This is literally now here's the thing. These pages, they're like this one chapter has 43 pages for this just, you know, test bank. So it can be pretty in depth. And um, what I personally do when I'm creating my exams like this, I just I go through and I see that's why I highlighted um, over here the the fact that you can see the difficulty level right, and the skills being used. So I try to get a variety, right? If I'm doing multiple choice, I'll make sure it's probably more in the moderate level, right? And I try to pick some things because, you know, you don't want too many easy. However, th what's great is that you get to decide, you know, what's best fitting for your students. So you can tailor it, your exams, to meet your students' needs and then still meet those assessment requirements. Right, because that's all you needed to do, right? Just pull from those that chapter that's needed. And they have like this one. Uh, there's, as you can see here, 168 questions. They give it, they um, map it out for you with uh, the difficulty level and the skill level. And what's great is they have a lot of um, essay questions included, multiple choice, true, false. And those are the biggest ones. Oh, short answer. There are some short answer ones, which are, you know, instead of like the full, like they expect like half a page essay, the short answer is only going to be like two to three sentences. So it, they ver ask very specific things, not like, hey, give me like, you know, five examples. <laughs> it's like, just answer this, you know. So it's, it's pretty nice that it's all there. Okay. And the mobile app, right? This is this is so useful for students, and it's you know it's not it's okay that you know the high school students they try to keep the cost low for them, which is great. So in order to do that, they don't really have access to this, but you do as a faculty. So what's nice is then you can listen to it and you can use this to um, have the audio version of the textbook. You can access online resources through your mobile device if you want to. And it's, I think it's very useful. I mean, I've had it and I've been able to like at least pull up my, you know, my textbook if I want to look look at things and I'm like, it's quick, you know, cause my textbook's all digital too, just like you guys. It's like, you know, it's nice to be able to have it on hand. Um, well, I know some of you guys have the physical textbook, which is nice, but if you want to, you know, a little more easy to move around, hence the mobile part, right? you can have that digital version available. Um, 
what was I going with that? I was like in my head, but it, I found it very useful. The listening part of it. That's what I wanted. To, that's what this next slide is going to show you. It's actually from their website, but this video exemplifies the mobile app from a non traditional students point of view. However, it provides this quick overview then of the accessibility of the resources that you as ACE faculty can use. Um, you wouldn't be completing the obviously the chapter learning quizzes that they talk about in the video, but um, you could use those to create your own quizzes or simply utilize the ones provided from the text, right? The ones in the text banks, but these can give you ideas about what you might want to do. But this video is only again another minute and a half. I'm always on my phone for work, so I always have it on my person. To have the ability to use it for school as well is super convenient because it's already there no matter where I am. The Revel app, it's way more interactive than just the regular textbook. There's quizzes and there's tests to make sure that I'm understanding what's going on. And there's the mobility of it, so you're not stuck to a desk. You're able to multitask. Chapter 7, Cognition and Language. Learning Objectives, Module 7. Being able to pair the Revel app and use the audio over my Bluetooth as I'm going to my clients has been huge for multitasking, getting my homework done, and my job done. What is cognitive psychology? The mental processes associated with seemingly simple tasks are surprisingly intricate. For example, a job waiting tables at a restaurant involves multiple... I travel all over the state with my job. Sometimes I'm out in the rural areas where I don't have great signal. So with the Revel app, I can be offline and still access my homework and my chapters. It's given me the ability to be present when I need to be present and the ability to also get my homework done. The Revel mobile app has definitely made my life easier. informative video. <laughs> so I recommend it obviously is why I put it in the slides but it's it, I found it to be very useful like I said the audio is nice because then I can just like if I I don't know sometimes it's just easier to listen rather than to read at times. So yeah I, I, I haven't nice. read a book in years I do audio See? books. So. Uh, so this would be very helpful then for you I think. Yeah yeah no doubt. Definitely. So whoop, that animation that starts. OK, so we're getting towards the end here. I have a few slides here left with the practical tips. And, and then I'll leave it open for um, you know if Mr. Fulton would like to speak at the end here. So practical tips that I found, um, play it safe, right? And use the course textbook. And it's in the master syllabus. That would be my um, kind of just useful tip there, <laughs> but it's it's so much easier just to already have it there. The resources are provided, our tools to make, you know, they're already there, teaching more practical, current, and relatable for the students, right? Kind of this idea of, I had a high school teacher that used to tell me, work smarter, not harder, right? And so <laughs> I just feel like it's already there, just use it, right? Um, download your material early to review the content. It, and then they give you updates so you can kind of check back in too. Okay, could have added that, I guess, but check back in and see if they've updated things for you. Um, insert updates for pictures and graphs with um, each new textbook version you get. Uh, like I said, as something I was like, oh, I'm good, you know, I'll just update a few things. And I, now I'm like, oh, I always have to put the new pictures in there because it's surprising how much new stuff does come out, right? And then of course, check with me, your liaison, <laughs> or the Office of School Partnerships for assessment um, information each year. Like your liaison should, when they first contact you, which I was made sure I did for you guys, because it's just a psych this year, um, letting you know the, about the assessment. But if for some reason your liaison doesn't tell you, right? Or if I'm not your liaison next year or something, they don't tell you, 
make sure that you like, hey, ask that question because you need to know for sure before you start planning out things, right? Okay, and my little final practical tip. I found this to be one of those like scanning documents from your cell phone, right? This is like a little, but this is actually really helpful for even you guys with uh, sending student samples to your liaison, right? Because you can literally just like, you know, on this now with, you know, most of my um, site observations were virtual this time. I think Mr. Fulton, you were the only one I was able to go to <laughs> personally, but everyone was virtual, which was um, challenging for some to get me documents. And I found that this cell phone way is actually very, um, it's useful, it's helpful, especially if it's just to, to get like the, the few information to the person, like if you don't need it to be like, you know, this perfect kind of document. This is a great way to just get the information quickly. So you can follow through on this if you, um, I know there's a lot of steps there, but it, the first part, nine are just for the iPhone. And of course the next five are for the Android, depending on your mo mobile device, right? But it's actually pretty, pretty nice. So that's my little, I mean, I won't walk you through each step, but you can see it there. And then you can always access this um, PowerPoint later also. So. I'll leave this up to, I wonder if Mr. Fulton's thought of any practical tips, but <laughs> did you want to share any of your own practical tips? <laughs> um, the only thing I'd say is, um, if I remember correctly, the downloadable resources for psychology anyway, still have, still had exam view tests on it. And I have them if somebody needs them. The reason I bring it up is because I still use Moodle. I don't know if there's any old timers out there who still use that in addition to things like Google Classroom for the distance learning right now. But one thing I found useful is with the exam view, you can load the uh, questions directly into Moodle and the students can take them online. And with Moodle, you can time the test. So the, it's a timed exam if you want it that way. And in that way, you're sending it out, it's being taken, you can control it a little bit, you can change how students are doing it because if we wind up doing everything virtually for a time, it's a useful tool to have. So if anybody uh, is interested in it, I invite you to email me and just um, let me know you're interested and I'll get you out that information. But that's the one tip I could, I, the one thing I'm using right now that I've found is good since I'm sending students out to for virtual stuff. And then the, the point you were making about um, the phones, whenever we went out, for um, uh, the first uh, period where we weren't allowed in schools, I had a whole lot of kids who were doing everything for the class, the virtual stuff on their phones. They have laptops now, but still a lot of them, if they can do it on their phone, they're gonna do it that way. So anything we can do, like you were suggesting with the books and other things that we can get onto their cell phones is, is good because they're more likely to do it yeah exactly that was i love that i'm glad you included um some information about psychology because that's i'm not teaching psych right now so that was something i know some about but you actually have more practical tips for that so thank you <laughs> all right well this is my last slide here thank you for attending mr fulton and um for those of you that are watching later right um I hope to see everyone actually in person next year when we have the dinner and we can meet in person and talk about and share our own tips and helpful things that we've learned throughout the year. And um, if you have any, you know, if you need any resources or anything like that, please reach out to me. And all the images, I just like my little tip here, but all images, um, resource on um, all the image resources are available upon request. If you have any inf like requests on these images, most of them are from the Penn Highlands website, just to let you know, but just in case, because I know some of them are really nice. <laughs> so if you do want them, I have them for you. So yeah, any questions or comments or anything like that, you can always shoot me emails or call me on my office phone or anything like that. So here for you.
And anything else that you want to last little tidbit there, Mr. Fulton? Th thank you, Professor Crowley. Good job. Yay. I know. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to end it here and I'll see you guys all later then. Yay.